Moose's contract is set to expire in June as the forbidden door is now open between Impact Wrestling and New Japan Pro Wrestling. Diona Perrazzo wants to know when will the forbidden door be open for women? Impact Wrestling halts production on Explosion and the Sportster does it again with another fantastic article. All this and more are coming up next on Shooting Up North with Lewis Carlin right here on the Impact Lounge. Hey folks, welcome to Shooting Up North. I'm your host, Lewis Carlin. Thanks for joining me today. Real quick, in case you don't already know, and I, just a quick reminder, I do have my own YouTube channel, the Alliance Pro Wrestling Network. Head on over there, check it out. Lots of great content on there. The Alliance Pro Wrestling Network. If you like what you see, if you like what you hear on the Alliance Pro Wrestling Network, Feel free to hit that subscribe button. Always happy to get more subscribers. Makes me a happy person when I see that subscriber rate go up. And it has been going up. It has been going up. We're almost at 250. Looking to get to 300 and then 400 and 500. But right now, you know, baby steps. Uh, so head on over. Check it out. Alliance Pro Wrestling Network. If you like what you see, consider hitting that subscribe button. I'd be very happy. Thank you. Okay, so let's get on to the Impact Wrestling news and stuff. Um, Moose's contract, according to reports, Moose's contract is up in June. So this is Fightful.com. Sean Ross Sapp reporting. He writes, Fight Fightful mentioned recently that contract season was going to last longer for Impact Wrestling. We have more evidence to back that up. Apparently, it will carry well into June as Fightful Select has reported that one of Impact Wrestling's top talents will see his contract expire unless a, an extension is met. Moose has been with Impact Wrestling since 2016 and became the only two-time Impact Wrestling Grand Champion. Okay, wow. Uh, before the title was unified in 2018, he also holds the record for longest reign and combined reigns. Uh, so Impact Wrestling, uh, nice, nice shout out there to the grand title, by the way. Uh, <laughs> meaningless title, meaningless title. Uh, but but anyway, but Moose, Moose's contract up, as I said here, as they say here in June. Uh, Impact Wrestling can't wait. Impact Wrestling cannot wait for this contract to expire to negotiate an extension. They need to get on that right now. Hopefully they are. We, we can't lose Moose. <laughs> okay. Impact Wrestling cannot lose Moose. I know I'm sure there will be interest by AEW. I'm sure there will be interest by the WWE. But Impact Wrestling cannot lose Moose. He is right now the best talent that they have in my opinion right now they can't lose moose they cannot lose moose if they lose moose that is going to be a huge huge blow that i don't know if i don't know who they could bring in that would replace moose so bottom line scott demore don Callis, please don't don't let moose go just give him what he wants you know don't wait until tony khan gets a hold of him and on a phone call or something and offers him a sack of money and then uh, he decides to go over to aew impact wrestling has the money impact wrestling needs to offer their own sack of money to moose and make sure that he does not leave impact wrestling i know moose has a huge match coming up with the rich swan title versus title uh, Impact World Title versus the TNA World Title. Uh, the TNA title is now an official title um, made by Scott Demore recently. Uh, that's going to be a fantastic match. Um, whoever wins that match uh, is going to be a double champion and most likely go on and meet Kenny Omega. Personally, I think Moose versus Kenny Omega is a bigger draw than Rich Swan against Kenny Omega, but I'm not making the decision, so I'm not sure who's going to win that match. Um, but bottom line is they can't let Moose go. They can't let Moose go anywhere. They, they have to sign Moose. They have to sign Moose. Please. It's, it's a plea from, from Lewis Carlin here at Shooting Up North from the Impact Lounge. Do not let Moose get away. Get him to an extension as soon as you can. Please. Please, please, please. Don't let him get away. Don't let Moose get away. It's incredible talents. 
just don't let him get away. And then that's all I got to say. That's all I'm going to say on that is, is impact. I'd be very, very disappointed if they let Moose get away. And uh, they better be working on that extension. <laughs> that's all. That's all I got to say, man. They, they better be working on that on that extension for Moose. Don't don't let Moose get away, man. I think a lot of people would be upset if uh, if they let Moose get get away. I think that a lot of people would be very upset, and I think a lot of people would start losing faith uh, in Impact Wrestling if they if they let Moose get away. Yes, you could say, oh, they're with AEW. They get the partnership with AEW. Uh, they have the partnership with New Japan Pro Wrestling. That's great, but they need their own stars too. They need their own identity. It can't always be, you know what? We need an opponent for for Rich Swan. Oh, let's let's see. Uh, let's see if Kent is available, or or let let's see if uh, Darby Allen's available. Or, or we need a we need an opponent for the Good Brothers. So oh, let's let's go see if uh, if uh, Minoru Suzuki and uh, and uh, who would he who would he team with um, Minoru Suzuki and Tai Chi. Let's see if they're available. Or let's uh, let's see if uh, maybe we get some. We need somebody in the X division. Let's let's see if uh, uh, Yota Sushi is uh, ready to go on um, ex excursion yet. Maybe we could bring him here. Uh, maybe Yuya Umura is ready to go on excursion. Let's contact New Japan Pro Wrestling, see if we get some. They need their own identity. They need their own stars. Okay, bottom line. They can't let Moose get away. Unless, you know, they, they figure, oh, maybe Moose will go to AEW. And if we need an opponent for Rich One, again, maybe we can get Moose back here to be the opponent. <laughs> to be the opponent. That way we can have Moose and we don't have to pay him. Uh, but, but that's bad joke. But, but bottom line, they, like I said, they need their own identity. They need their own stars. They can't let Moose get away. Bottom line, they have to sign. They have to sign Moose to an extension. This is a must sign. A must sign. They can't let him get away. All right. So at Sacrifice, we have Diana Perazzo defending the knockouts title against... ODB. I predicted it. I said we're gonna have Diana Perazzo when, when I was talking about uh, young talent. I, I predicted that they were gonna have Diana Perazzo defending that title either against ODB or or against Jazz at Sacrifice. And I was right. It's Diana Perazzo against ODB. To me, this match makes no sense at all because ODB was it two or three weeks ago lost to Kimberly. So. What's her reward for losing to Kimberly? A title shot at sacrifice. That's her reward. And now they're, they're pushing that, oh, maybe ODB will be a, a five-time knockouts champion. I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. Uh, Diana Perrazzo needs to hold on to that title for as long as possible. She's obviously their top star, and they need to get her some, <clears throat> excuse me, some some real, real opponents. I mean, ODB, nothing taken away from ODB. You know, she's had her time, great talent, but it's time to move on. Time, to, like I said in the past, it's time to look at the future, not the past. We need to bring some future into into Impact Wrestling, and uh, if Diana Peraza loses, uh, she's not going to. I don't even want to. I don't even want to think about it. I don't want to even phantom that thought. Uh, she's not going to lose. She's going to defeat ODB, you know. And then it'll be time to move on, okay? And we need to get some fresh, young talent in Impact Wrestling. We need to bring in a Killer Kelly. We need to look at um, uh, Diana Perazzo was interviewed recently. She named some talent that she would like to see Impact Wrestling bring in. Jody Threat was was one name uh, that I'm very familiar with. She's up here. Jody Threat up here in Ontario. Great, great talent. Would be fantastic. Alexia Nicole would be uh, another great um, great um, signing by Impact Wrestling. Some more fresh young talent, fresh faces in the knockouts division. Uh, that's exactly what they need. And as a matter of fact, the Forbidden Door, I mentioned New Japan Pro Wrestling earlier. Now, the Forbidden Door has been opened between uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling and uh, Impact Wrestling. But Diana Perrazzo, Diana Perrazzo um, tweeted something. So Scott Demore tweeted, step through the Forbidden Door and watch uh, New Japan square off against Impact Wrestling Sacrifice. Uh, it's, it's going to be the Good Brothers defending against Finjuice. That's what Scott Demore is referring to. Uh, so Diana Perrazzo responded to that tweet by saying, can we get women to step through this Forbidden Door yet or what, Conspirator Demore? So yes, it's, it seems like she's... Uh, 
she's a little frustrated because this is not the first time she's mentioned something about you know getting some new women uh, into Impact Wrestling or, or insinuating that she would like to see. Um, is insinuating the right word? She's referring to. I'm sorry. It's a little early. My mind's not working properly. Uh, she's referring to uh, getting some more young talents uh, into Impact Wrestling. I mean, I, 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 I. I agree with her 100%. I agree with her 100%. I mean, let's get some let's get some fresh faces in. I mean, where's Killer Kelly? I mean, why why aren't they even considering signing Killer Kelly? She would be a tremendous opponent that they could build up for Diona Prazo. You know, she mentioned I mentioned Jody Thread. Oh, if they brought Jody Thread in. Jody Thread is fantastic. Jody Thread is tremendous. Alexia Nicole up here as well. Uh, just another fantastic talent up here that would do really well in Impact Wrestling. And um, Alexia Nicole was actually on a number of Impact Wrestling shows um, 2019 when they were up here in Toronto and Windsor. And she was just fantastic. She had a great match against uh, against um, Jordan Grace. Uh, and that's actually 17 million people have viewed that match on YouTube. I mean, just 17 million people have viewed Alexi Nicole versus Jordan Grace on YouTube, and but they haven't signed Alexi Nicole yet. So I don't, I don't. I, granted, maybe a, mo, a lot of them, most of those views were most likely for Jordan Grace. But I don't know if you look at some other Jordan Grace matches, she really hasn't hit 17 million views on YouTube. Uh, but against Alexi Nicole, she's hit 17 million views. So something there. There's something with Alexi Nicole. You know, they need to get some fresh faces in it. And Diona Prazo wants it as well. And I don't think this is a storyline. I think this is really Diona Prazo saying, hey, look, I'm I'm the top, I'm the top woman here in the knockouts division. I want some real competition. I want some real young, fresh talent in this division uh, to give it a we need this division needs a shot in the arm and and we need this 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 young talent to come in and, and give it that shot that it needs. And uh, I, I commend uh, Diona Perrazzo for for stepping up and speaking her mind and saying, "Hey, let's let's do something here. We could really do something special here." Yeah, you know, it's not always it's like you can't always just keep bringing in people like ODB and and well Jazz for the first time, but you can't bring in the, the people from the past. You, again, they have to look to the future. They have to look to the future and see who they could bring in that would really inject some really fresh new life into Impact Wrestling. Because as I said earlier, they can't always depend on New Japan Pro Wrestling and AEW Wrestling to supply them with challenges to their to their champions. They, they need to have their own identity. They need to have their own talent to do, do, to do that. Okay, they, that's what they need to do. All right, so what's next? What's next? Explosion explosion impact wrestling explosion production has been halted on impact wrestling explosion uh let's get here the article here called the holic states here Impact Wrestling indefinitely pauses explosion production. Impact Wrestling have reportedly indefinitely halted production of the program Explosion, the company's secondary long-running series. Explosion first aired in November 2002 and was regularly taped at the same time as Impact shows, blah, blah, blah. And um, I think they want to, uh, they shifted their, they shifted their, um, Let's say, according to Mike Johnson of PW Insider Impact, has not completely canceled Explosion, but the decision has been made to put the show on an extended hiatus while focus is shifted towards the development of the new program before the Impact, which debuted three weeks ago and sits in the hour before Impact Wrestling airs each week. Okay, so they've halted production. It's not completely canceled, but they've halted production on explosion so they can concentrate on before the impact. This is a mistake. Okay. This is a mistake in my opinion. And here's why before the impact is fine. You know, I've watched it. It's, 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 it's decent to watch before you watch impact wrestling, but why did they have to halt an explosion? Why not just give explosion a complete facelift? Why do they have to halt production? I mean, one thing doesn't have to do with the other. Explosion is primarily on Impact Plus. One thing really has nothing to do with the other. One thing really has nothing to do with the other. 
I mean, they should give Explosion a complete, a complete facelift. Make it into a new talent showcase. Make it into a new talent showcase, man. That's what they need to do. I mean, like I said, this is on Impact Plus. It has nothing to do with before the impact. Before the impact is on, is on before um, impact comes on. Why do they have to halt one show so they can concentrate on the other? I mean, why why can't they produce this film a few matches? It doesn't seem difficult. Film a few matches with with new talent and put it on explosion, and put it on explosion. Make explosion the new talent showcase. It's it's not that difficult. It's very simple. It's very simple in my opinion. I, I don't I don't I don't know why they would uh I mean I've wanted them to do this for a while. I wanted them to do this for a while. But um I don't know why they're uh they they don't want to do it. I mean it's just, it's just a no-brainer. I mean look look what AEW Dark is doing on YouTube. I mean I mean get explosion on YouTube, make it a new talent showcase. I think it's a mistake. They shouldn't be halting it. I think it's a mistake. I don't think they should be halting it. But they are they're halting. It's not. It's not canceled completely. Um, but uh, who knows? Who knows when we're going to see explosion again? I, again, I think it's a mistake. That's what. I, that's that's my opinion. I, I don't know. I don't know why it's why why the idea of a new talent showcase for Impact Wrestling, um, it's just not on anybody's minds right now. Not on anybody's minds right now. I mean, I think I think a new talent showcase for Impact Wrestling would just be absolutely fantastic. I think the fans would want to see that. I think they would absolutely want to see that. But hey, I can only voice my opinion. I, I can't make any decisions there. It's just it 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 boggles my mind with the success of AEW Dark, with the, with the success that NXT has had for, for WWE. NXT is not really a deve developmental, but it used to be, and it developed into its own show. Just just It just boggles my mind that Impact Wrestling wouldn't even, isn't even considering doing that. Okay, anyway, so Let's talk about Sportster, okay? Let's let's talk about Sportster. You know, I'm sorry, it's it's like it's like five o'clock in the morning right now, and um, I'm a little tired. I'm still a little tired, still still kind of waking up. But let's uh, let's talk about Sportster because Sportster released an absolutely just a a just a crucial, crucial, crucial article on um, TNA slash Impact Wrestling. A crucial article, one that I think everybody needs to read. They, they've done it again. Sportster has done it again. And I'll read the... Uh, I will read... I will read to you the title. <laughs> I, so I still can't believe that they released this article. The, the title of the, of the article is The 10 Worst TNA Wrestling Attire Ever ranked because that's so important that's so important everybody wants to know what the 10 worst tna wrestling attire ever was and and the sportster is giving us this cutting edge fantastic article that's this is must read this is must read brilliant stuff on the part of the sportster must read brilliant stuff on the part of the sportster i personally haven't read it because personally i don't give a damn <laughs> But yeah, so so um, of all the all the you know, some of the positivity that's happening right now, uh, that that Impact Wrestling is achieving with um, New Japan Pro Wrestling and and AEW, the partnerships that that are happening right now, all that positive stuff that's happening right now, you know, the Sportster decides that they're going to release at least an, they're going to release an article about the ten worst TNA wrestling attires ever. Yeah, great stuff, great stuff, Sportster, thumbs up. Thumbs up for Sportster. Let's give him a thumbs up. Yeah. <laughs> and when you scroll down, and when you scroll down, you know, I know Sting is with is in AEW. So if you scroll down, they have a, a related article link that you can that you can click on. And that related article is the 10 worst things that TNA did with Sting. Yeah. That's that's another article that I'm not going to even read. Okay. 
and I'm not going to waste my time with. So, yeah, so two articles here, uh, 10 worst TNA wrestling attire ever and the 10 worst things TNA ever did with Sting. Great stuff. Great stuff, Sportster. Just fantastic stuff on, 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 on your part all around. There's always just cutting-edge great stuff that Sportster continues to put out day in and day out. Fantastic. I want to touch on the New Japan Cup USA for a second. I know the New Japan Cup is happening in Japan currently, but there's also going to be a U.S. version of it, the New Japan Cup USA. And the winner of the New Japan Cup USA gets a shot at John Moxley. And I have, I have some fantasy booking that I want to discuss because I think it's really good fantasy booking, actually. So I just want to throw this out there. And I talk about it on a podcast that I did on the Alliance Pro Wrestling Network as well. What if, what if the winner of the New Japan Cup USA is Carl Anderson? What if he wins and we get John Moxley defending the US, the IWGP US Championship against one half of the Impact Wrestling Tag Team title holders, Carl Anderson in a New Japan Pro Wrestling ring. I think that would be just fantastic. I know New Japan Pro Wrestling, very interested in Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows, but I, I think Carl Anderson is the better one-on-one -on -one wrestler than Luke Gallows is, and I think he would give John Moxley a better match. Moxley and Anderson have a little thing going on in AEW. What if it spills over? Like, what if it spills over to New Japan Pro Wrestling or even spills over to Impact Wrestling? What if Moxley shows up to get revenge on the Good Brothers and takes out Carl Anderson? And then Carl Anderson wants to get a little bit of revenge on John Moxley. He shows up uh, and decides he's going to enter the New Japan Cup USA tournament. He goes into it. He wins it. And then we get John Moxley versus Carl Anderson. Uh, at a future New Japan Pro Wrestling show here in the States for the IWGP US Heavyweight Championship. I think that would be fantastic. I think that would be fantastic. It would give Impact Wrestling a uh, great presence in a New Japan Pro Wrestling ring. I know right now we have Finn Juice uh, will be challenging uh, the Good Brothers at Sacrifice, uh, but that would give Impact Wrestling a great, great um, um wrestler in Carl Anderson. I know New Japan Pro Wrestling is interested in Carl Anderson and um, it was great to see an Impact Wrestling wrestler in a New Japan Pro Wrestling ring challenging for a New Japan Pro Wrestling title, that being the IWGP US Heavyweight Championship. So that I think that would be great. I think that would, uh, I, I, I'd, I'd like to see that and I'm sure you would too. But uh, again, that's just fantasy booking. Uh, I haven't read that anywhere. I There's no rumor that it's going to happen. It's just just something I have in my head that I just want to run past you. And, and let me know what you think about that. You know, Let me know what you think about that in the comments. Okay, and, uh, and that's it. That's it for me today. I want to thank you for listening to me. I am Lewis Carlin. This is Shooting Up North right here on the Impact Lounge. It's five five fifteen in the morning, <laughs> and uh, I might be going back to bed after this. But uh, but on that note, I'm going to say thank you very much for listening. I'm your host, Lewis Carlin. Until next time, thank you very much. Take care. Bye bye. Stay safe, everyone. Bye bye. <laughs>